What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Scale News Update. If you're not familiar with the show, this is where we talk about the news topics that happened in the scale world of RC over the last week. If you enjoy the Scale News Update, hit the like button. Let's jump into this week's topics. First up for this week, we've got photos of the upcoming MST DC-1 body. This is a Land Rover Discovery style body, and it looks just really good, just like most all of MST's bodies. This is what they show as a first physical prototype, at least that's their captions on the actual social media post, but the body just looks great. I'm not a huge Land Rover fan, but like, again, all MST bodies, this thing just is looking pretty good. This is a 12.3 inch wheelbase. So if you are a fan of this body, but want to put it on your own platform, it's normally an option pretty quickly after release of the truck. Like we covered last week, MST has a new truck coming out that's going to use this body and it's got new axles underneath of it that are non-portal. So it's kind of like the CFXW from prior, but without the portals and a little bit different styled axles. If you're looking for this as soon as possible, you're gonna have to pick up that new kit. But other than that, you're probably going to see this body for sale just a month or so after the release of that new kit. So watch out for that. It's gonna be a nice new addition to add to the scale market, especially for the people who are really a big fan of discoveries. Next, last week we had a big release from Associated and they released the SR10 Dirt Oval car. Now, I, Dirt Oval Racing, pretty big out here on the West Coast. There's a track not too far from me here, usually has good turnouts in the summer, but still did not expect to see this from Associated. Now it's built on a very similar platform to the DB10 and the DR10. However, it's on the shorter buggy version of the chassis. So it's not the short course length that the DR10 is, it's significantly shorter wheelbase. It has a stock car-esque body that sits on top and it's got some, you know, stock car style wheels on it, some dirt oval grooved tires all the way around. Just again, it's made for dirt oval racing, but even if you're not into racing, I could see this thing looking like a, just a, a fun basher, street basher or something like that. You know, the parts are going to hold up fairly well because they're used on like the DB tens, which are just straight bashers. I could still, I could see this car being something fun to play with just out in the street, you know you could hit curbs within, it wouldn't be a big deal. The wheels and tires look good overall. Cool release, uh, no idea this will be nearly the hit that the DR10 was for the no prep world. I can't see dirt oval racing options being as popular as a DR10. Anybody can go take a DR10 and drag race in their street. Dirt oval takes a dirt oval likely. Either way, I could see these things moving some units and they, they look fun. I could see it being appealing, sitting on the shelf at a hobby shop, but time will tell and see what those sales numbers look like. Over the last few days, Kyosho has posted a little teaser video showing that they've got something new coming on December 21st. Doesn't really lend much. It's just kind of a shaky barn door teaser video, but never know could be scale, most likely a basher of some sort as that seems to be kind of the type of season that we're in right now. Either way, we're gonna keep an eye out. We should know by next week's scale news if it's something in our arena or not, or you can follow Kyosho on Facebook and hopefully catch this release yourself as well. Next, RC4 Wheel Drive released an updated version of their 9.5 CTIS worn winch. Now the release says that it was updated for more scale realism. All I can really see is that it looks like there's a rubber cap on the top side of it. Don't know if that's it or not. Most of the rest of it appears to be pretty similar, if not the same to me, but it's still a great looking winch. It's very representative of a full size worn winch, which haven't changed in quite a while either. So shouldn't be any big shocker there, but I don't know that this is any stronger than the previous version. I haven't compared the old specs to the new, but if you're not familiar with these winches, they are again, a very scale version of a worn winch and the dead load lift rating on these is 6.6 .6 pounds. It's got a rolling weight limit of around nine pounds. So it's kind of just a, scale winch that does function, but it's not going to be the most impressive winch that you can put in a vehicle. If you purchase this winch, you will still need to pick up a winch controller as well. So don't forget that while you're shopping. RC4 Wheel Drive offers some options with winch controllers for both wired or wireless in case you don't have an extra channel on your radio, or there's other versions that you can pick up from someone like 
Hey, okay, power shift, a number of other vendors. I'll link to the winch as well as some winch controllers in the description below in case you're trying to do some shopping and don't know exactly what you're looking for. And coincidentally, while doing my rounds searching for scale news, I did see that Intigy also released a new version of their unbranded winch, which looks very similar to the RC4 Drive one as well. But that shouldn't necessarily surprise anyone. However, what was surprising to me is I noticed that on their Facebook, if you leave a five-star review for Intigy somewhere, maybe their website, something like that, it appears that whatever message you put in that five-star review gets posted directly onto their Facebook page. So do with that what you will. But back to RC4 Drive, they released a whole new truck this week. Well, mainly some of it's new. The new truck is the Cross Country Black Rock Four Door. Now this is a Jeep-esque hard body rig and it has an all new chassis underneath with K44 axles. Now it appears that the K44 axles are a different version than the previous K44. It appears that it has a proper side drop to the axle and this is rolling on some 155 wheels. Now the wheelbase on this truck is 11.9 inches. So once you scale that out, if you look at the wheelbase of a full-size JK and compare it to this one, those 155s are a little bit small. They're only about a 15 inch wheel. 1.9 maybe would have still been a better scale choice, but regardless, the top on the new Black Rock body is removable. The rockers can be removed. The fender flares can also be removed. The transmission that's in this is the same two-speed transmission that we've seen in the TF2 kits previously. But again, the chassis that's underneath is new. Now the body also has an opening hood with magnetic closure. The grill is a solid kind of cutout or it's got a cover over over it. it doesn't have a seven slot appearance so it kind of gets around some of that jeep marketing a little bit but obviously it's very clearly a jk four-door it is a four-link rear suspension with a three-link with pan hard set up in the front with a chassis mounted servo the front servo sits at kind of a weird angle not sure if it's to dodge some things in the engine bay or if they're just trying to give you as much room as possible to do something like a 3D printed motor cover for that engine bay. Up front, the two-speed transmission sits there. The motor is the highest thing in this vehicle. It sits up above everything else in the chassis. Not sure if that's because the motor just sits way too high or everything else is just really low. But regardless, motor sits up there quite a bit. So once you open the hood, there isn't really anything scale to look at, but there is a lot of options for you then to do your own thing up there to try and add your own scale flare. Now that opening hood doesn't allow access to the battery because the battery seems to mount towards the rear. A nickel metal battery is included like most of RC4 drives vehicles. Obviously, if you don't have a battery, it'll get you by, but probably something worth upgrading pretty much right away. The rest of the electronics are standard issue for RC four wheel drive. Nothing special, but they'll get the job done. The included spare is the same as the rest on the vehicle. So you have a fully functional spare tire. If you like Jeeps, this is pretty close. It's not exactly perfect on proportions. It's a little wonky on the body side, but you know, the new bright bodies were always super popular. This has uh, some reminiscent shapes to that, but hopefully if you're really looking to have a hard body JK four door and you weren't willing to pay the money that new bright bodies were fetching nowadays, then this will be a substitute for you. I was also told that there's additional springs included in the package to help you tune the suspension. Now it is worth noting that those springs are actually separate from the shocks or dampers. So you do have two separate units, helps with the scale looks. Granted, those ones in the rear still, they're a tipped in design towards the center. Not the most effective thing, but something that you can probably change down the road if you're looking to go a more scale route. This is listed as coming soon. Not sure if that means it will be here in time for Christmas with how close we're getting already. Not likely if I was to guess. The street price on this is shown at $4.99, but it is a hard body with full metal axles, and bead locks, the whole deal. So there's a, quite a bit there. You just have to decide if it is exactly what you're looking for. If it is, you can go to their website and add yourself to the 
back order or pre-order list and then wait for it to arrive. Speaking of pre-orders or back orders, there was an email from Red Cat this week explaining to dealers that the demand of the orders on the 6.4, that low rider that they had that has the actual hopping and three wheel motion features, that the demand was pretty decent. However, the shipment that came in was not enough to actual fulfill the orders. So they were only going to fulfill the orders that went direct to Red Cat and we're not going to be sending any of those to dealers. So if you pre-ordered one of those through a dealer rather than direct, it looks like you may have got the short end of the stick on that. You're either gonna wanna go through Red Cat direct or just one of those things you're gonna to have to wait longer to actually receive your product. So that was an interesting email to see, thought it would have been one of those options that was more of a first come first serve, but it appears that they decided to go a different route with that. Next, there was a new release from Reefs this week, and that is the Micro 99 Servo Winch. It appears that this servo winch would be used on something very small scale as the actual pulling power on it is pretty light. So not sure if this is actually being marketed towards 124 scale owners or something like that. I would assume so based on the size. They're selling a separate mount as well, but they don't show it mounted in anything. They don't list any of the intended vehicles or show any example photos or anything like that. Nothing on Facebook or their website. Really information is very sparse, but if you're looking for a winch in your 124 scale, then this might be one of your few options, unless you're using like a retractable name tag type thing. Not sure. Not sure how big of a market there is for actual winches in a 124 scale. I admittedly am not a huge fan of winching in RC unless it's for an actual competition. And especially with the 124 scales, just pick it up and move it. Just, it's, just move it. But don't let me stop you. The Micro 99 Servo Winch is available for order on Reefs, it appears, as well as through Reefs dealers. The retail on that Servo Winch is $64.99. Next, as we get closer and closer to Christmas, if you're looking for any last minute gift ideas, you're running out of time and supply on a lot of kits has been pretty limited. But I did notice that A-Main picked up a new version of the Panda 118th scale crawler. They've been carrying these Panda versions for a while. They've got kind of a power wagon truggy style. And now I saw they just picked up this new one, which is basically the 118th 18th version of the Bronco like Traxxas has. It's the red and black paint job as well as a tan and brown version also. So kind of that in between from the 124th and the 110th, just a cheap little indoor crawler, light outdoor crawling as well. Not going to be a ton of options for these, but it appears like you're going to be able to find some replacement parts for them. So they're not complete throwaway items. Lots of body and color choices available in this area in case you're trying to pick up multiples and don't want them all to look the same. And one last gift idea is that the new Genzace chargers are actually hitting shelves now. And these are a really inexpensive charger for the features that they're giving you. They're only about $45, but they're a 6S capable 100 watt charger. They'll do five amps at a time. And again, 45 bucks, a nice charger. Looks like they're just trying to get these out there at that low price. Worth picking one up if you need a new charger, you're trying to get a charger to go along with a gift or something like that. This one for the money, pretty hard to beat right now. Definitely worth a look. Add it to your cart while you're checking out on something else. But the rest of the week's schedule, if you've never checked it out, Matt over at Scale Builders Guild does Lightroom Live on Tuesday, where you can send your photos in to the email address that I'll put in the description below. And you can actually send a photo of your truck in and he'll go through and kind of touch it up, taking some ordinary photos and making a lot of them look really good. So if you've never seen that, it's worth the watch and try sending in a photo of your rig in case you'd like to see it on the show. And then after that, you can join us on Wednesdays for live stream takeover. This week, maybe I'll try and convince Matt that we should get a guest again. If you have some suggestions for guests you'd like to see on live takeover, put them in the comments below, of course. Friday night live on schedule as usual. And then Sunday night, of course, we've got 3D printing Sunday, STL Sunday. Last week we did a bandsaw. I actually printed it out here. So we go through the process of modeling up an item in 3D. I put the files on my Thingiverse and you can download them and print them. This week we did a 1 scale bandsaw. And it even has a spring in it so that it returns itself. 
Isn't that fancy? And again, I put up all the models on my Thingiverse, so you can go in there and there's a ton of different scale items you can grab, 3D print away, build out a full scale shop if you like. And for those of you who have been following along, not this week, but likely next week, Matt and I will have an update on the RCPC series where we're taking those Tamiya 1 14th scale trucks and trailers and trying to put in full gaming PCs inside of the trailer. I actually spent a good chunk of the last four days building up my new 1 14th scale big rig. I had a great time with this and it made me think of this week's question. And that is, when was the last time that you got into a new portion of RC? 1 14th scale semi trucks, definitely not an area that I had been in before, but an area that I am thoroughly enjoying exploring. So when was the last time for you and what was it? Is scale trucks your latest dive into RC or were you always into that and you recently got into bashers or drag racing or are you starting to do some flying now? What was it? What was the last thing that you dove into? Put it in the comments below. Always enjoy reading those. Again, thanks as always for you guys spending your Tuesdays here with me on the Scale News Update. I appreciate it. I hope you guys have an awesome rest of the week. Hit the like button before you go. Subscribe if you're not already and hit the notification bell so you see the videos as soon as they get uploaded. With that, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.